You're listening to the Pittsburgh Pile Driver. What the hell is that? Podcast. Hello, Interweb Verse. You are listening to the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. This is the P3 podcast coming to you live from wherever the f- heck we are. Oh. Uh, tonight, we have a special Fatal 4-Way episode for you. That's right. Ooh. It's fatal not just four-way. your three idiots talking. We have four idiots talking. <laughs> hey, I'm now. Uh, uh, myself. I am Alec Ransom. I am one of the three jabronis that usually hosts this dumpster fire of a podcast. With me is the glorious as ever Beef the Legend. You sound south to the gills already, man. How many beers have you had? I've had no beers, but all I've been doing, but we, we before this f- shit show started, we would mentioned Goldberg a few times, so I'm already on the, the rage. Oh, he's drunk with anger. Oh, he's <laughs> drunk with rage. Uh, next, let's go ahead and introduce your, for the time being, chooserweight champion of the world, Poot it's, the Bard. It's Poot the Bard, baby, and I am here. I am your chooserweight champion, and that could easily, easily change this Sunday with our predictions for Money in the Bank because it's a Duh. tough one to call. And uh, why don't you introduce our special guest? I have a very bad feeling that there's going to be a one unexpected title change coming up here at uh, at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, and it's Dude. not going to be broadcast on the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. Whoops. Nine ninety nine. Let me go ahead and introduce here, coming to you live from the Casual Gaming Dad Studios, we have Tom Bodnar here with us. What's going on? Yes, Casual Gaming Dad is here, a.k.a. for this, uh, for this podcast, Tiger Bomb Tom. Why not? Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Tiger, Tiger Bomb? Tiger Bomb. Bomb. Tiger, Tiger Bomb? Bomb? I, you know, old, like man, Tiger Bomb. old man didn't know how to work Discord. What? Tiger Bomb? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Either either is appropriate, honestly. At this point, I could use some Tiger Balm on the uh, back, dude. You know Balm what? Up, son. Oh, you know here. what? Same, actually. Yep. Oh. You Tiger know what? Though I'll, I'll I'll speak I'll speak for the boys. We're super excited to have you on. We've been kicking around doing this for the last couple of weeks and just looking for a good end. And this is you know a great Perfect. a great show to bring you in. So we're super excited to have you aboard, Tom, for this for this uh, in evening of the uh, of the, uh, the the first ever. Uh, Fatal four way uh, event of the uh, the PP podcast. He went full oh, triple. I, he went full Triple H with that. He was like, "We're uh, happy uh, to have a, <laughs> happy uh, that you are yeah. uh, uh, joining uh, <laughs> uh, the podcast." Uh, well, you so know what? I'm, 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 oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I'm, I'm uh, thrilled. I'm thrilled. Thrilled to be doing this. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to it. And I hope it won't be the last Fatal Four Way. I will say though. I wish I could have been on last week because, man, I had some venom to spit about Goldberg, too. And I know you guys caught it in the in the group chat on Facebook. So. Oh, <laughs> well, there's have... nothing that says that we can't start out this episode with just a little That's bit of ranting and raving saying. about the I Goldberg. mean, come on. We, there's we, always we room always... to bash Goldberg. Yeah. 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 Now, now, we get started, now, speaking now, of Michael. our special guest, before we get started, Beef, why don't you go ahead and thank the sponsors that we have. WrestleDeals.com, your home for... Violent deals and bloody good prices, as well as Ooh, somebody you their know weedies. what? I'm gonna let you do it, Tom. Introduce your wonderful channel to our people, please. Well, uh, the other sponsor for the P3 podcast is myself, Casual Gaming Dad. Um, yeah, check me out on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitch, and Instagram, and uh, you'll definitely see me uh, sharing these uh, sharing these three jabronis out here on my page and everything like that. There, I, I cannot. I cannot speak highly enough of how much I enjoy the podcast. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to have to mute my mic a lot because I crack the fuck up every time I listen to you guys, and I love it. <laughs> I love the chemistry, and I, I just go back and I re-listen to stuff. Uh, I cannot I cannot tell you how much I love the collar and elbow tie-up episode. See? Uh, just, ah, just, thank just, you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Love it on that episode but i had a great time doing it dude it was uh, just because you were drunk halfway through man not even halfway <laughs> at the beginning i think we Listen, started the episode with a stone cold pay attention to the alcohol volume on on the beers that i was partaking in that evening thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, he, it did sneak up what was it it was um 90 minute yeah yeah it was close yeah 90 i threw but, i, I no, threw no, back no. two coronas and then i think three of those 90 minute ipas yeah, it was Good it Lord. was 
It was Dogfish Head, not sponsored. Uh, Dogfish Head IPA. <laughs> um, and uh, that sits at about, I think per beer, it sits at about like 8.9 or 9.2. Oh good lord! Yeah, yeah. So I, I paid a, a visit to the to the bathroom after uh, after we wrapped the podcast episode. And purged myself of all of those horrible demons. Uh, oh, speaking of little demons, big demons. So, oh. Hey, you know what? Before we so b- so before we jumped into the portal of hell that is professional wrestling anymore, I think oh. we should start the show on a positive note. And kind of circle back to wrestling these days. We do, we okay. do, my friend. Competition is back. It is confirmed that all elite wrestling will be on television on TNT in a nice fat primetime slot. Everybody, round uh, of applause. I, I'm super excited. Yes. It's that's super pumped. That's that's that, that, that's hype. Like I said on my fast count news on Facebook the other day, as long as they learn from the mistakes of their predecessors, I'm telling you, man, this is major change. It's looming. It yeah. feels big. It feels big, and that's not just what she said. Yeah. Oh, oh wait. My. They say that. There. They not do when the they're talking about me. Oh, <laughs> big dick tiger Sing. bomb, Tom. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Tri- big dick swing AKA, over tri- here. AKA tripod, Tom. Apparently. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, well, there hey, goes I'll our PG what. rating. Sorry, Vince. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Wow. <laughs> they always say they either want what's in your wallet or in your pants, and. uh... <laughs> If you saw my setup here for the Casual Gaming Dad Studio, you would know surely hell ain't my wallet. So, oh my God, I have, Tom, I have no idea what my wife is after. Then, uh, well, that, uh, your charming personality, oh, oh. <laughs> gags, <laughs> no. jokes. Tom's got him. The uh, uh, I got him. <laughs> um, no, uh, no, Tom, I'll I'll send you a picture of the 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 illustrious oh. uh, Poot the Bard Studio. When you oh go. God. <laughs> Oh, oh, just wait. I'm so happy that that sentence ended the way it did because I'm like, you're going to send what? Okay, so we're off the rails. We got to get back on. Oh, yeah, on, we got to get back on. on. So, Real AEW. Back Speaking yeah. of off the rails, how about oh, Goldberg okay. coming back to the WWE? Oh. Well, we're jumping right back down. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If uh, uh, Since I didn't get to spit some uh, Goldberg vitriol last week along Ooh. with you guys, if you don't mind, I'll take this one. Uh, <laughs> so, the fact that they're bringing back Goldberg, eh. I can I can deal without it. However, I will say, thank Christ on a positive note that he is not getting any sort of title match for uh, for that against Kofi or KO. Either one. The fact that they're going to put him against the Undertaker, uh, that's going to be such a that's going to be such a letdown of a match. I'm I'm sorry. Dude. I can't see I can't see how either one of them can carry one another because Taker is old as dust. He needs yep. somebody to carry him, and Goldberg. Can't carry a fucking two minute match to save his life. I, if, now, I mean, if you now, go back and look at the match that Goldberg had with Brock Lesnar when Goldberg came back, oh fuck oh, that! Oh match. my lord, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Batista falling in the ring at his last pay per view was more graceful was more than the yeah. entirety of the Brock Lesnar or, uh, or the Goldberg. I, look, they're both they're both terrible. Now um, they now, are okay. I I've said it before. Goldberg wants to come back. He wants to be a superhero for his son to have his son see him wrestle. That's cool. You know, it boosted ratings. It popped people. He got his last little hurrah. But this is like, I, I, I don't this. Okay. This match is for the people over in Saudi Arabia who still thought that Macho Macho Man and Yokozuna were still alive. Oh, Oh, no. Yeah. Well, speaking about a touch. Seriously. You know what? Like, though, is Goldberg he, coming here's the back thing. for just the one match, or is he signed to like a Legends contract like the freaking the, Brock Lesnar? From what is? he says, from what Goldberg says, it's one match, it's one appearance. Now, here's the thing. We've had that narrative, the Goldberg, I'm back for a superhero. And I understand it. You know, when when the Saudis give you a call and they have a blank check with your name on it, it's very fucking tough to say no. And we have talked ad nauseum about the moral compass of WWE or lack thereof. But, you know, in, in any <clears> situation, <throat> oh, whenever, whenever you're given <clears throat> pretty much as it much money end. as you fucking want, you can it's, – it's, it's tough to say no to that. So the, the real test of time is – well, that's not time, but the real, 
what's going to show me is whether he sticks around after or want be, or, or or not because Fox wants him around. Big you know, time. Uh, that's fine that Fox wants him around. You know something? It, it occurred to me today. Um, while I was over working on guitars, something popped in my head. Do you think, aside from the fact that Vince McMahon is an old man oh. that is out of touch with what wrestling fans want and don't does Reality. not give a damn? Now, do you think? that the development of that idea and him being like, well, it doesn't matter is because he has money just rolling in from, you know, being handed to him hand over fist from like Saudi Arabia and Fox. He like, it really is like he doesn't have to try to get this money. He just gets it. So it, to him, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the it product broke. is. If it, if yeah. it ain't broke, why fix it? You know, it, exactly. Well, that's, I mean, you nailed it on the head when you think about the match that Goldberg is in. And look, The Undertaker has had an illustrious, amazing career. And when he Absolutely. was at his prime, he was the best. I mean, he was amazing for a big dude to be able to fly around the ring, walk like on the, the top rope. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he did some pretty impressive things. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not shitting on The Undertaker's career. He did really impressive things. But at the age that he is now. And with Goldberg being the caliber that he is and always was, just a, a disaster in the ring, it's going to be an absolute garbage match. I mean, the Saudis will probably love it because, you know, it's The Undertaker and it's Goldberg and the whole dear Lord. But for the people yeah. that watch wrestling for wrestling, we're going to watch that match and go, Ugh. I agree. The now, entrances are going to take longer than the actual match. That's my prediction. Absolutely. Probably. Oh, absolutely. They will. I, I will I will say I do agree with your point that you guys made on the last podcast with it where you know if he wants to come back make his money that's fine but I have the same problem that you have Poot and uh, and uh, Ransom basically the fact that in a way like I'm okay with him coming back as long as they don't put a title on him number one but I also look at that like the fact that he's taking up a spot on the card that's a yeah. spot that could have gone to somebody else like you got to invest in the future, which I will say I'm very, very hopeful for, um, you know, one day whenever Triple H takes over, I'm really hopeful that um, he will continue utilizing and really developing, uh, you know, the guys and, and gals down in NXT because it, did he, did any of you guys read the, uh, the NXT book? Uh, the future is now. No, no. no. Okay. Huh. Is it good? So I, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, I have it. I I read it. Um, yeah, it basically just talks about how you know NXT got started from you know from the days of FCW and everything like that, and basically how the one day they're sitting in a board meeting and you know they're doing their usual thing, and at the end of it, you know, whoever McMahon or whoever says you know anybody else have anything else to bring up, and Triple H goes, yeah, uh, what are we doing to make new superstars, and you know, and nobody really said anything. And then he just, you know, kept, you know, going on with it, like, time after time again. And finally, until McMahon was like, all right, you know, here's money, go do something with it. And, you know, he makes the devel the developmental center, all that stuff. He, well, and he has, he has a mind for the long term. Vince, I feel it, like you guys said, I think Vince feels like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, you know, and he hasn't for the longest time had to really try too, too hard because WCW was his last biggest competition. Yeah. TNA wasn't going to do anything. Ring of Honor, Nothing. not really doing not anything. There, yeah. They're pull, you know, they're pulling guys from there. AEW has a chance to really, I'm not saying they're going to go head to head with WWE. Don't get me wrong. And I don't think that's AEW's intentions. Nope. However, that's it's gonna you're gonna notice them i think they're gonna they're on vince's radar already and you know i think that's pretty apparent the, with what he's doing but the, to, but to get back to the goldberg thing like again part of me but it part of me it bugs me that he's uh you know taking away a spot from somebody else you know a younger guy in the roster that could use it however i will look on the pause and say as long as goldberg doesn't wear a tight another freaking wwe title especially not the damn wwe championship i'm okay well <laughs> it's a matter of time to, it's, it's a matter of time so don't shut your hormone to go back <laughs> wow that's the first <laughs> one of the night no um tom to 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 just digress just a, a little bit 
the the ironic thing is that you said Triple H has this mind for long term booking. Ironically, that's the old school way of booking. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like McMahon's not doing an old school way. He's not doing a new school way. It's literally at his whim. And that man yeah. from years of of you know sleeping two hours a night, not knowing what a burrito is, not not uh, you know like working sneezing. out no endlessly. Sneezing. You know, his supposed alleged uh, affairs and steroid use, like, I mean, he, his, like, he's, he's, he's literally a crazy old man. He's and the epitome is, of a psychopath. This is, and this is, this is a great segue because, Poot, I want to dive into what you kind of talked about on, on uh, Fast Cut News the other day. Sure. About that report about that podcast, and I, it's failing me right now, but where the, where the creative, um, had talked on the podcast, and they said how well, it wasn't. It wasn't you know, creative. It was a friend of three WWE writers. Gotcha. So lo- long story short, yeah, it's it's the he, it, he said she said, but at the same time, it's very believable because it talks about how it's all about Vince McMahon, which is very apparent with especially with the stupid fucking uh, uh, revival and Usos angle. Oh god, yeah. Um, yeah. he's doing it to but, make but himself it's, pop. Yep, yeah, and, well, yeah, it's, and it's, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Again, no, I, I, I was going to say, you know, especially with, you know, how it feels most nights that it's off the cuff. Like, none of it feels planned. Where's Robert Root? He fucking beat Ricochet. Who was the first one to pin Ricochet on the main roster? Where has he been? Gone. Who, there's no, no, no fucking consistency. Well, no, no and, and, and I think it goes back to, it harkens back to what, you know, Tom said about, you know, there being no real competition with WWE. Vince isn't competing with anybody, so Vince isn't, from what I can see, he's doing what he wants to do to entertain himself. Like, it, it's, it's blatantly obvious that he doesn't give a shit what the fans want, and, and that is, is, you know, that's evident said with, through Sami Zayn. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what's happening. He's speaking through Sami Zayn, so when Sami Zayn comes out and shits on the fans, it's Vince McMahon shitting on the fans. That's what it is. And I think AEW, and I'm, I'm hoping that with AEW, it's not going to be a war of ratings. That's what it was with WWE and WCW. It was a war of ratings. Right. And Vince who was out, all, you know. Yeah, who's got go the bigger ahead. dick? Who can outdo who? Yeah. Yes, it was, it was a war between, you know, Vince and Bischoff Ted and Turner, Turner for ratings. But with, I think with AEW, I don't think it's going to be a war of ratings. I think it's going to be, hey, AEW is going to take – all of our good, not has been wrestlers like WW, WCW took, AEW is going to take good, young, talented wrestlers who are getting buried in obscurity in WWE. So it's not going to be a war of ratings with AEW. If anything, I feel like it's going to be a war of talent because talent yeah. is going to want to go to AEW yeah. where they're going to know, hey, you know what? I'm going to get a decent match. I'm going to get a decent push. I'm going to get a decent storyline. And I'm not going to get buried in Vince McMahon's obscure bullshit. Now, devil's advocate here, okay? No matter where you are, whether it's AEW, Ring of Honor, uh, CZW, for God's sake, or New Japan, or over in the Progress system, like you there, and or in WWE, there is only so many hours of television to build, uh, to build storylines, <laughs> And to build superstars, to, you know, or at least attempt to build superstars that were at the level of the social zeitgeist like The Rock or Mankind or Stone Cold or, or hell, even going back to WCW, the NWO. Like you, there are only so many spots and yeah, sure. They can be rotated out, but there are only so many hours on TV. There are a lot of wrestlers who are getting work on the, the house show thing and you know, but but again, because if you over overbook your talent, and this is what I'm kind of worried about with AEW, because they have such a huge roster, and they're having what their program's going to be two hours long. Two you hours know, long? I haven't read how long. I, I I'm I'm hoping it's two, but 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 I don't think they've disclosed those details well, yet. Nor, but, nor have they well, said when it's officially you know when when it's going on or what day of the week it's going to be well, on either. So. Well, regardless, so, so let me say me real quick. Well, I want to counteract that. Poot's point real quick and say maybe the bright side to that is with the enormous roster that AEW has, the, the plethora of talent that they've got, and if they only do a two-hour show, that gives them the chance to really showcase their people. Because, all right, say Cody and the Young Bucks are on this week, 
Well, maybe they're not going to be on next week. So you're going to want to tune in the week after to see if they're going to be on the show and to see what they're doing with their storyline and watch their matches. I think it's, it's going to keep people Interesting. invested because it's like, oh, okay, we're not getting them this week. So we got to tune in next week because I want to know what they're going to do. I want to hey, know yes. who else does that. Kind of, you know, NXT. You know. Uh, yes, sir. NXT yep. and NXT UK. Yep. You, yep. If, you're never going to be guaranteed, unless you read spoilers, you're never going to be guaranteed to see, you know, your favorite NXT or NXT UK superstar unless you, you know, and then, you know, in the process, you're going to see people who you may have never seen or may, you know, first time I saw Keith Lee was uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, my God. What a what an awesome dude. I love yep. it. Would you say so, he's like, limitless? I feel like that gives them the chance to showcase their talent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, not have it be oversaturated. With WWE, I think they had a good thing going when they had the brand split because you knew you were only going to see these guys, gals, on Raw. You were only going to see these guys and gals on SmackDown. Now with the wild card. Wild, wild card. card. It's, pretty much just, it's pretty much just, hey, whoever, you know, we're going to have whoever the fuck show up we want that we think are going to get ratings. And, the, and so yeah, there isn't a the real that, brand split anymore. People the, can show up wherever they want. The thing that blew my mind was the fact that the morning of Raw, that didn't exist. Yep. That did yeah. the wild card rule was not a thing. And, and that goes and that goes right back to what you were saying about how McMahon is uh flying on the seat of his pants doing this stuff, like having rewrites up to within hours of the show. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean now now granted sometimes sometimes something like that has to happen because you, you know, uh, God forbid. I mean, I, I can't see it happening too many times because somebody would probably be get canned for it. But you know, if uh, we'll look at look at WrestleMania for example, we were supposed to have uh, we were supposed to have Taker come out at WrestleMania, and he couldn't make it, like travel issues or whatever. So we didn't get him until the next night on Raw. So yeah. something like that. I understand you have to be flexible for that, but. Uh, you know that aside or like a major illness or something like that like somebody literally is like you know like it's coming out of both ends and they can't even go and work <laughs> in the ring or cut a promo or anything then yeah you got to do a rewrite but there's no need for that you you gotta you gotta go out long term and i will say that is where some of the other wrestlers uh you know like cm punk specifically uh whether you agree with the guy or not whenever he left how he did when he did some of the things that he was thinking about was like, okay, what's the long, what's the big picture? What's the long term build? Like, where are we going with this? It's got to yep. make sense, you know? Exactly. And, exactly. And, and, and some of it is just not it, a lot is not making sense right now, but a lot. on the, on the, <laughs> on the bright side, on the bright side, um, as long as they can manage to keep some of the younger talent around and keep them happy, you got a lot of great things going on down in NXT if, and NXT UK. If here, because here's the thing the current crop of NXT and NXT UK guys and gals signed their contracts before all of this kind of started going down, up to and even including DJ Z, who just reported to the uh, Performance Center here earlier this week. So. Uh, DJ Z, Zima Ion, uh, former Impact oh. um, X Division okay. champion. Oh, oh, um, I, actually, I remember him. I, right. I, I, I remember I, I him from. Saw a... him. Yeah, yeah, I was, was going to say, I remember say, him I... for the one, like the five minutes that I watched Impact back in the day. <laughs> well, and I actually, I actually saw the dude in uh, the Expo One over at the Clearfield Fairgrounds uh, the first time I saw. Um... Oh, no. What's the name of the big. Um... Oh fuck! I, I, IWC. Um, the first the first time okay. I saw IWC in, in, in Clearfield, uh, he was there, and I was like, okay, this guy's interesting, not knowing what he'd be going to become. But but my my point here is that these guys and gals and and, and Vince and and Co are are looking to lock them in. Look at the kind of contracts that they're giving out. You know, they're locking them in long term to keep them in here. So, you know, I you know for for for, for the most part. With this generation right now, the die is cast. They are where yeah. they are, and they have to make the most of it. But I think that if so, again, thinking long term, if AEW can make sure can can stay relevant, can be a success, and can have a successful business model to where they're making money and be you know a big deal in five years, 
that's when I think you're going to start seeing some real big, you know, tectonic shifts at, at that point. Now, again, that's thinking way far ahead, but you know, that's, that, that's, that's kind of my point. Ahead. Right. Yeah. The point is you got to think ahead. It, they've, they've got to be thinking, uh, long term because like that was the problem with WCW was that you know they were they were so horribly mismanaged and I think that's where I think that's where AEW is definitely going to shine is because you have now granted you know it again uh, it, uh, Ransom had brought it up before the business of wrestling there are a lot of egos that you got to keep in check and I will say to McMahon's credit that's the one thing he had an advantage over back in the day was that he had the final say that you didn't have these, uh, you didn't have these, you know, pissing contests for powers where, uh, you know, when, uh, when Brett went over to WCW, he wanted $1 more than, than Hall and Nash and Hogan, you know, just to stroke his ego. Uh, you know, you didn't have the finger poke of doom happening because there's no way in hell McMahon would have allowed it. It's been a double edged. It's coming to be a double edged sword now, because while we've had that constant, that constant, uh, you know, guiding, uh, g- you know, steering the ship just by the one hand there. Now it's like, okay, well, you know, uh, yeah, the old man's lost his vision and he can't steer the boat as well. We need to, somebody needs to step in and, you know, take over a little bit. So, but I think if, if AEW, if the, if, uh, you know, Cody and the Bucks and everybody can kind of, everybody can keep their egos in check and do what is best for, you know, for their company and everything and really, uh, you know, keep trying to bring in new stars and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I think, I think they'll definitely <clears> give <throat> to, oh, oh my God. Oh boy. <laughs> Burp oh, so loud. Dog you bark the dogs. <laughs> who let the dogs <laughs> out? Adam Stomach. The big dog. Oh, the K break. No. K break. Oh, uh, yeah. shit. I knew it. No, the, dog, the dogs of Mordor are barking. Every time yep. he burps, it sounds like a bowling ball going downstairs. <laughs> hey, no, look, I, I think so, as far as the, the egos go, you know, I, I'm not really I'm not super worried about that with AEW simply because Cody has been in the WWE. He's see, he's seen how it operates. And he right. I think I think he is so dedicated to wanting to make it better because I, I have a feeling the frustration that he had in the WWE. He doesn't want a himself to have to go through that again and i don't think he's going to want to want the other talents that either come from wwe or from other you know walks of life that come to AEW. i don't think he's going to want them to go through that kind of frustration that he had to go through and with jericho there especially i mean jericho being the veteran that he is i think he's so down to earth at this point that he knows look you know he's doing it because a he physically still can b he's still great at wrestling but I, I think he probably has that attitude of, hey, you know what? I've been there. I've done that. I don't need to stroke my ego. Everybody already knows Chris Jericho. So Chris right. Jericho could have a match with Johnny Nobody, and it doesn't matter. It's not like, you know, Jericho's not going to do it to stroke his ego because everybody – he's a household name with wrestling. Everyone knows right. Chris Jericho. So I, I don't so, have that fear with AEW, and I'm, I'm – maybe I'm lulling myself fear. into a false sense of security with that. Yeah, but I don't. my – my biggest fear that I that I brought up a couple, a couple weeks ago was the two minute cooks thing. I'm, I'm kind of moved past that. The other thing that kind of gnaws away at me is how long until the pocketbook gets involved. Um, we've seen it time and time again. Um, Turner in uh, WCW, I... um, Dixie Carter in TNA. How long until the cons say, "Okay, we want some say in this. Let's I, start." And and I, and I and I understand that the cons are great businessmen. They own the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, for better for worse. Long, just, you know, not, or how long until your sponsor crashes your podcast not, and makes it a fatal four way? Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I uh, beef. I really don't think we have to worry about that because I the cons, not. the cons have made their money and then some. Uh, and and understandably, you could argue the same fact for Ted Turner, but he did it for because he wanted like we're a he was a wrestling like, fan. Yeah, he's a wrestling fan, and he's just as batshit as Vince McMahon. The cons, yeah. I really believe that they have faith in Cody, the Box, Hangman Page, Jericho. Like they have faith in them to run this. Like they have faith in. 
the wrestlers and they have faith <sighs> in the direction that they want to take. They are going to and yeah, they're going to be in on meetings. They have to know what's going on. And of course, they don't want to hemorrhage money, but they're not, they they probably are well aware that they do not know how this works and they know the pedigree of Cody. They know how smart the Bucks are. They know how savvy Jericho is. Like you, you can't like. I mean, think about it. How how much part of the wrestling zeitgeist for in in the mainstream was New Japan Pro Wrestling until Bullet Club became a thing. A fair point. point. You're right. So they're going to look at that and they're going to go, look at all the money these guys made themselves. If we let them yep. do what they know how to do, they're not just going to make themselves money. They're not just going to deliver a great product. They're going to make us tons and tons of money. So, like, And I will say this. <clears throat> uh, I will say this, though, too. Uh, even before they have all the – even before they've got this TV deal and even before, you know, uh, they've got all this other stuff going on, Look at what uh look at what the Bucks and them are doing just with their YouTube stuff with the whole being the elite stuff. That stuff is money. That is gold yes, right there. Is. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So the good. only thing I, I wish I they what did the cons was too is that is as long as Cody, the Bucks, Jericho, as long as those guys who are uh you know in the know and making the decisions, as long as they're bringing in money, I, I think they'll stay out of it. Now, if they begin to hemorrhage money. Just like anybody else, I'm sure the owners are going to say, "Okay, we're going to have to maybe step in here a little bit, and you know, right. maybe try to make some changes of our own." But I think, but as long as the money's not hemorrhaging, I don't think they have any need or reason, or probably even desire, to get into the whole, you know, you know, writing aspect of it, or what, even, you know, what's this storyline going to be? Even I don't if think they they're step in, even if they step in, they're going to go, guys, what the hell's <sighs> happening? And they're gonna, they're gonna solve it, like, like Ransom said. On like business the back end, on like businessmen, right? They're not going to handle it and go, all right, we're taking over and we're going to be the authority and we're going to be that. They're not going to do that. They're going to no. want to get the bottom line back in what in the red? Am I saying that right? No, in the, in black. the black. In the black. Okay, I always get those mixed up. They're like they'll get their bottom line back in the black, and then once that happens, <laughs> they'll they'll sure they'll check up on it, and then once it starts going again, they'll walk away. Yeah. I'll tell you who, and, and this is this is me fantasy booking a little bit. You Do know, it would be a huge coup for AEW, and and I know you're all going to oh, think I'm saying going to say Gilbert. Punk, and, and I'm, exactly. No, you know who would be huge as an idea man? Paul fucking Heyman. Oh, sure, that would yeah. be. You know, for for everybody that's uh that's been uh t you know talking about like will Punk go to AEW? Will he not? Uh. It, it, here's here's one thing that could could uh it, it it's uh, I think a lot of people have stopped and forgot about how punk is because I've 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 read and heard different things about before when uh you know supposedly uh, when AEW was very first being even mentioned um, that you know there were reports like oh they're talking to punk and punk's like no he's like nobody's ever officially come to me and asked me like hey here's the deal. This is what we want to do with you. Um, you know, he said, he's like, he's talked to the bucks and it, but it's just been like more of the, more so like a sort of in passing sort of thing. Punk. And, and this kind of ties into the ego thing a little bit, whether you, you know, whether you like or love punk or not, whether you agree with how things went down with him leaving, I feel like punk feels, <clears throat> um, you know, that he, he needs to be sought after. Like if some, if, I think that's why he's been away for so long too. Like, I don't think anybody's come to him and said with a concrete deal, we want you to do this. And I think that's what punk is looking for. I think he wants to feel yep. that, uh, that he, he want that they want him and he's going to be accepted. Like as, they, he wants, he wants to be wanted. You know what Venk, I mean? As Venkman said, I need to feel loved. I need to feel desired. Exactly. It's, the, it's 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 the Bret Hart complex, and and if you look at CM Punk, it's not hard to see that he really had a, a big fanship for Bret Hart, uh, and and I don't know if he's ever oh, gone yeah. on record for it or not, but but if you look at how he wrestles, how he talks, how he presents himself, it, and and it, right down the fucking line is the same way with Bret Hart. Bret Hart is all about his ego, and again, he's one of my you know was one of my favorite wrestlers, and CM Punk is right there. 
if CM Punk were set back in the ring today, he'd probably be my favorite wrestler again. It to be to yeah. be to be all, all all things being equal, but he has yeah. an a giant ego. And you're 100 percent right. It's it's got to be stroked in order for him to come around. Now the big now, question. Here's the thing, though. Oh yeah, what's the big question? The big question is, Punk always complained that he, even though he went and said, "Here's 13 weeks of programming for me. I have ideas," and they turned him down. That was one of his frustrations: is not having creative control. Now, let me ask you a question. Even if he went to AEW and and Cody and the Bucks and everybody in the con said, like, okay, here's who you're working with. You come up with your ideas. What's the over under on Punk still being unhappy because he's forced to work with someone? Like, like at what point will CM Punk be happy with his situation no matter where he is? Because he seems like a constant curmudgeon. You bring well, up a good point, and I, I harken yeah. back to the days of, um, hang on, I got a loud friggin' car driving up the road. Oh, jeez. Rickety, rickety, yeah, rickety, rickety. Mower. Oh, does the it? The motor machine gun's driving up the road here. Wait, because um, it's, down yeah. there, it's down there in Mordor, so is it going mass, 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 mass? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's pretty much. Mordor is the meth capital of the western Pennsylvania. Um, when you bring I a just punk, had to mute it, my mic. <laughs> Uh oh! Somebody's it, it, never it, been I to Clearfield. To I was, no, I've never, I've never been that way yet. I had to mute it because I was just laughing so hard from that. <laughs> <laughs> well, where, where the, where the flippity form was thinking? Oh, um, everything that you just said about punk poot, it harkens back and really reminds me of the days when you know after WCW was done and they were you know talking about bringing in the big WCW guys uh, when there was discussion about bringing in Hall and Nash. Uh, it was reported, and again, you know, this is, I'm going off of, you know, different hearsay that I watched and things like that, you know, listening to um, YouTube videos of, uh, you know, Jim Cornette and Bruce Pritchard and things like that. But it's always, it was always brought up that when they brought the name Kevin Nash to the table, that he was always referred to as a locker room cancer. And I can't help but really be reminded of that after everything that Poot just said, you know, if you're AEW, sure, Punk is a big get. But at the same time, is he going to be that locker room cancer with that ego and the big head and, the, oh, I don't want to work with this guy and, you know, I need to be sought after and wanted and, and this, that, and the other thing. Like, I almost feel like maybe CM Punk in and of himself is a locker room cancer just just because of his let attitude. Me, All right. Let me, uh, let, me, let me respond to that with another sports metaphor. But, but, uh, and, and this, go ahead. Before you do. And I'm sorry, and this isn't the most, like, as far as uh, WWE goes. Apparently, um, just just uh, released at age 39, uh, ex-WWE quote-unquote superstar Ashley Massaro is dead. Yeah, yeah I saw I was, that. Yeah, I, I just, didn't see I just that. sent that to the... Holy Yeah, crap. I sent that to you guys over the group chat. Um, yeah, it's a bummer. Um, yeah, Joey, uh, my, one of my viewers, uh, Joey... Who uh, I think is one of the ones I turned to your guys' podcast. Yeah, he he sent that to me, and uh, he's also been he's been sending me the stuff that I sent to you guys today uh, uh, about like about Flair being hospitalized and about uh, uh, Alexa Bliss being taken out of the Money in the Bank and Nikki Cross being put in and yeah, it's, it's been a like, whirl, it's been a whirlwind of a day. Yeah, dude. Anyway, go on, Beef. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're 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 fine. Um, so. As far as locker room cancers go, here's the thing. You got to say to yourself, do you want to win the big game? And do you have somebody that can control it? Um, and I hate myself for even bringing this up, but look at the New England Patriots and Randy Moss. Randy Moss uh, is a well known fat crybaby um, who is, is 100%. Exactly. He, he's, he's 100% a locker room cancer. But I'll tell you what, when he went to New England, Bill Belichick had him whipped into shape and they won the trophy. And that's what matters. So, yeah, you know yeah. what? Uh, I could – I, I could be – you're, you're, you're 100% right. You're, you're 100% right. Punk could be – and I'm not saying he is because I think that he truly does have a love for wrestling. Deep down, buried underneath all the bullshit now, I think it's still there. So, yes, he could be a guy that creates a problem. But – and – I'm going to, uh, you know, put the put the chip on black and say, hey, you know what? Yes, but if we get him, how many amazing matches? Punk versus Penta. Punk versus Omega. Punk versus Cody. 
Punk versus Hangman. Punk versus Pac. The list goes on. Oh, and Punk on. Pac. Oh. It does, but at the same time, and you know, I get it. Like your 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 metaphor or your reference or whatever makes a lot of sense with the Patriots. But when you regardless of whether or not you're a football fan or not, when you think about football, you know, look at the wins that the Patriots have. I mean, they're they're a dynasty football team. So when you are kind of a locker room cancer and you go to the Patriots and they say to you, look, here's the way it's going to be, you get the F on board. Well, you kind of get the F on board. Like, you 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 want to do that because you want to get yeah. one of those rings. And, you know, if you're going to be a New England Patriot, chances are you're probably going to get a ring. Yeah, but then the person – AEW, that- though, hold on. Is a- I don't know that AEW is that, though, because where the New England Patriots might be the be-all, end-all of great – football teams AEW has not established itself enough yet to be able to say we're the be all end all we're gonna you point. know really destroy wwe it, that's not going to be our mission but you know i i don't know that they have the stroke to bring punk in and then tell punk hey guess what this is the way it's going to be because i think punk would just be like well go after yourself i'll just go home again i have all the money i don't need your money I'll oh, go does he though? Ugh. Yeah, he does. I mean, he did that with WWE. That's why he left. You yeah, know, but... Punk is smart with his money. You know, just like Daniel Bryan, wow. I'm fairly certain that Punk doesn't need to work for the rest of his life. He probably could sit on the nest egg that he acquired in WWE. So unless Damn. you have the stroke as a company to say to him, We're, "We want you. We want you. We want you here. We want you to wrestle." But you're going to do it our way. You're going to get on board. You're going to wear the AEW flag. And you're going to be proud of it. I don't know that anybody well, there has the stroke to tell him that without him going, here's two middle fingers. I'll leave and go to WWE because they'll pay me a shit ton of money and they've already know, dealt with my bullshit. I'd, well, I'd, I'd like to think, I'd like to think that that won't be the case. I'd like to think that that wouldn't be the case, that they wouldn't have to come across it hope. that way. You know, you would hope. But again, that's, you know, it's it's all hypothetical. But yeah. if if they are able to, to land him, that would be... Uh, that would definitely be a big catch, um, you know. I mean, because I, I don't know of anybody in AEW off the top of my head that Punk's ever said that he had problems with. Obviously, like in in WWE, he had problems with. Uh, he, you know, he said that he feels like Triple H never liked him and this and that. But now I'm going to flip this completely around and segue and say uh, to Triple H's credit, you know, regardless if. Regardless if he's been a dick or not to people, you know, you always hear conflicting stories about different people throughout the business. You know, Um, I will say this. um, Have you guys seen um, and I'm going to guess that Beef has seen it watching uh, NXT and NXT UK. I noticed it. There was the advertisement for the uh, the little Triple H special coming up in June or something like where they're going to show about that. That looks friggin amazing. I haven't heard about that. Can you elaborate? Yeah. So, um, so basically, what it is, it's it's going to be kind of like I, I'm guessing one of those like either you know chronicle series or whatever, but it's going to go and show in like how basically like how Triple H is just a, a fucking Superman machine. of WWE yeah. right now. Fucking yeah. machine. Like, yeah. He doing like, it all. For, oh yeah. From ever you know from running NXT to you know helping doing stuff on the main roster to all the other shit that he does. Plus, you know, um, leading up to like, I think it's going to cover over like whenever uh, WrestleMania had just happened, like, you know, that, that week there, like leading into that and him having a match and everything like that, you know, uh, punk or whoever else could say whatever they want about triple H. I see more good than bad. I mean, obviously, you can't please everybody, and that's the thing. Like, nothing's ever going to be 100% perfect, and there's always going to be room for criticism. But I will say that uh, he Triple H has always been one of my favorites, and I'm excited to see this documentary because he is yeah. doing a lot of great stuff. And I, and I, think, that, I think that all of us would echo that, that, um, you know, it, we can't wait to see, like, what happens when he get, really gets behind the wheel of it when – you know, now he's in the driver's seat and, you know, McMahon's sitting in the in the back seat just going, oh, uh, hey, hey, turn left no. up here. And he's like, don't worry, Pops, I got this. Don't worry, Dad, yeah. I got it. The uh, It's, it's no. going to be a completely revel. I really am optimistic for WWE once. And I, I don't – I can't imagine it ever happening until Vince actually croaks. I don't think he's going to – he's one of those psycho control freaks. He's not going to relinquish control 
uh, to Triple H or I, Steph or whoever until he is in the ground cold and dead. I said. But when that happens, shut up. When that happens, <laughs> it, you're going to see a completely wow. revolutionized WWE. It's going to be a brand Jesus new champion, product. I don't. You're. It's a holiday title. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a new day. A, yeah. Yes, it is. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a completely new product, and I'm I'm super excited for. I mean, it, it it sounds terrible because you're like, hey, I'm super excited for this guy to die and someone else to take over. Well, uh, but it's the same token. Like, yeah, man, I'm really I'm really. Look at everything Triple H has done with NXT. Look yeah. at the superstars he brings in. Look at the look at the talent that he builds up. Look at the takeovers that they put on. I have never been so excited for a wrestling event than I was at this last takeover. I could not sit down during the Adam Cole match. I couldn't. I was, I was on my feet excited. I can't remember the last time I was excited about wrestling that way. When he takes over WWE, it's going to be a revolutionary new product. It's going to be revitalized. It's going to be a I can't wait. It's going to be no, so. Shut up. Fight me. It's going to be amazing. I Get said. Him. So we're I, I got boot. Well, I was just I was just going to say. Tom said McMahon will be in the back seat doing that. The only way McMahon is going to be in the back seat of a vehicle with Triple H is if Triple H is driving a hearse. Like yep. McMahon Agreed. is going to die Nailed in Gorilla. It. He's going to yes. die in yeah. Gorilla. He's and, You're and probably they've, right. they've said. That that was one of the things on that podcast where they were talking about the the climate backstage is that Vince will never step down, he will no. never do it. He's a nutball. He's not gonna. Yep. And guys, I, I, I feel I, like. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I I was just gonna say that we're having a great discussion. We do need to move on about uh, to talk about Money in the Bank though, because I I I know that you know we we are all excited for AEW, but money, we're, money, money. we're gonna have. <laughs> weeks and months to talk about this leading up to their premiere um and and by the way i'm super excited to preview double or nothing next week so let's kind of table things if everybody's cool with that and kind of move on to money in the bank which is actually no, shaping up to be a pretty decent card yeah that'll You're be good let's start let's dive into predictions man let's do it oh let's okay well let's I, I was it. gonna start with a little bit of, I, I was gonna jump into a little bit of history actually and and see what you guys is what what one of your favorite money in the bank memories Back is from the match from the event whatever? Okay, uh, well, mine. Uh, no, you go ahead. You know what, Beef? You're 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 at the helm of this one, man. You're the you're really the one on point right now. So you got the. To, to, why don't we start with you? What was your uh, what's your biggest memorable oh, money fuck. in the bank? If I'm if I'm if I'm the voice of reason, then we're in fucking trouble. Um, <laughs> no. so, not wrong. You know. Not I love Money in the Bank. <laughs> Money in the Bank might be my favorite match type in WWE, but my favorite Money in the Bank memory is not from the match itself. It's from Money in the Bank 2000 and I believe 11, um, which is when CM Punk beat John Cena for the title. Uh, Damn just, you! The, I mean, it, the <laughs> whole fucking, the whole fucking everything just exploded when his music hit. Oh my god! Like before. Like, Cena came out, and the crowd was riding him, which was nothing new at the time. And then, like, there was, like, a solid, like, maybe five, ten seconds where they cut Cena's music, and there was just booming CM Punk chants. And the whole night just felt like it was leading up to such a big boom. And, yeah, they fucked it up afterward, but, like, that moment where Punk beat Cena, and the crowd went crazy, and he took the title, and he, you know, blew the kiss to McMahon. That whole – I'm getting goosebumps just talking about They it. had – that, that, with that moment, they had their next Stone Cold. Yep, sure they did. They did. They had it in the palm of their hand, and all they had to do was let Punk do his thing. That's it. Yeah, and, ruined. And, and they, you know what? I I I hate I I kind of I kind of hate B for that because that that was my exact that was my exact <laughs> memory that I was going to say too. That that's iconic because that was. Even in the age of of all the smart marks and everything like that, and you know the kayfabe being dead and everything like that, um, you have the you have the life imitating art imitating life. Uh, to to even throw it back to you know uh, working the storyline based off of real life events that were going on. The, no one had any whole, fucking clue. It was great. No, yeah, exactly. Like the whole punk leaving, what was going to happen? Like the uncertainty of it. That was as good. Uh, it's 
definitely better. But I'll say the only thing that ever came close to that, as far as real life stuff playing out uh, in in uh, in a WWE storyline, was the whole Edge Lita Matt Hardy thing because that shit really went down, and those two had to work together and not kill one another. Like you had life imitating art, imitating life, and this was a that was perfect, perfect storyline uh, with the whole punk being unhappy and leaving, and the pipe bomb and everything. And yes, you are right; it was 2011 because that was. Uh, I don't remember when the Money in the Bank pay per view was when that happened. It, I think that was still whenever it was. Uh, I want to say in like June, late, late yeah, June, or maybe late say, July, one of the two. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say it was June or July because the the pipe bomb itself happened in April of 2011, and uh, God, that it was it's it, you know the fact that we're it, it's what it, that was 2011, it's 2019, and we're still talking about it. Like that just shows you how much weight it carried. And that's yeah. that's my that's my memory hands hands down right there. Now for me. I'm honestly going to we're we're 3 for 3 because that was going to be mine but the other one I had just in case that this this happened was whenever Jack Swagger and I can't remember oh. which one now hold on whenever Jack Suffer Swagger when Jack, Jack when, Swagger. when Jack Swagger <laughs> got the money in the bank contract okay he could not get that some bitch off the hook and it was one of the funniest oh. things cuz it was like it wasn't even like 15 seconds, 20 seconds. It was like a minute and change. He couldn't <laughs> get that some bitch down. And Stupid that was the year I, before. I, because like the other wrestlers, they had to just keep selling. And at what point does it become become like a cartoon? Yep. And and that yep. to me just stuck in my head. And, you know, it's like after he got the thing, you know, people popped. And I think half of it was because they were like, they liked seeing Swagger get a rub. But they also, um, they also were just like, hey, you did it. All right. You know, hey, you the- like, so like that, my 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 official one is three for three on the punk thing. But my my backup one is definitely swagger not being able to figure out how a fucking carabiner works. <laughs> oh. What say you ransom? Well, I'm going to go ahead and break the chain here. And uh, I'm going to say my favorite uh, favorite moment was the very first money in the bank when Edge won the money in the bank briefcase because I re- I, I'm a super, super big edge mark. Edgehead. Um, yes. I'm a big yes. edgehead. I mean, even back in the days when it was, uh, you know, the brood, super big edge fan, um, you know, when he had his intercontinental title run, super big edge fan. I just, I liked him because he wasn't the stereotypical WWE guy. He wasn't huge. Yep. He wasn't roided out. You know, his matches were always great. He was one of those guys that could always put on a great match regardless of who he worked with. And I really feel like with him winning the... Uh-oh, oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, there it was. <laughs> Let's wait oh, for it. Lord have mercy. Um, I feel like with him winning the Money in the Bank, it really kicked off the whole rated R superstar era um, that, that brought him into the spotlight as a, live as a legitimate main eventer. <laughs> oh my god, the live sex celebration. <laughs> Boy, that was super awkward and I want to pretend that that didn't happen. Um, I will Yeah. To, as a big edge, further, edge fan, that was that was my favorite one right there. To further your point there, Ransom, um I I I've also uh I've also been a huge huge edge fan for a long time. I even have the uh I have one of the one of his shirts that I have. It's the uh, it's the farewell tour one where it says "Done it all, won it all" in the back and has all of his accomplishments. Oh yeah, and nice. it has like I I have to send a picture to you guys if you haven't seen oh, it or yeah. don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, other people um, like Cena has been quoted as saying, "You know, Edge was just a mastermind of the ring, like knowing not so much being like the ring general, like how you you know people will say like Triple H and." whoever else and Taker were good ring generals. Like Edge was a ring genius where it was like, okay, if you do this move here, it's going to get this reaction. If you do this here, it's yep. going to get this reaction. And that, that to me, like that's, that's a very special quality to have. So yeah, I've, I can I've tell. the same thing about him. And I, uh, to, to nerd out here a little bit with you, Tom, um, I, yeah. back when they sold the, uh, the superstar, like fleece blankets. Yeah. yeah I have an edge fleece blanket. <laughs> nice. I can tell that I'm becoming a big NXT UK fan because when I heard the the words ring general, 
my mind immediately started playing Allegro con Fuco for Walter and Entrance. Dude, Walter. Enough of the music theory for the insane. Aside, aside, <laughs> aside from Walter, and we're not going to go off on a tangent. We'll bring it back, get to predictions. But like Walter, the thing with him that is, first of all, his look is so unique. When you see Walter. Like you, you remember him. You don't ever have to go. Oh, what was that guy? He was real big. He was from Germany. What was it? You just know Walter. Yeah, and you'll, also, you'll, you'll, that'll but, happen when he gets to the main roster. He'll his, get cost off. His, don't worry. His in ring work is phenomenal for being as big as he is. That yeah, drop yeah. kick that he does. Oh, it's uh, uh, again. It's, he'll make the main roster and nope. get cost off. He won't. Nope. Nope. No. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why he won't? He did, when he did the top rope splash onto Pete Dunn, oh. I, I, uh, my immediate first thought was the ring's gonna implode just like it did with Big Show and Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Holy shit, he's gonna, oh, he's gonna Dunn's put, dead. he's gonna put Pete Dunn through the ring. Like it's gonna be like, it's gonna be like whenever uh, whoever it was was a Big Show that choke slammed somebody through the ring before. Yeah, yep. probably. That's what I was thinking. I was like, "Holy no, shit, I, that's what's gonna happen." Like that's the thing is, Walter is just. He, he's he's a special talent. He's not going to go to the main roster because I think part of his he deal, has no interest in it. Huh? Exactly. He has he has no interest in it because he is so big over in Europe. He doesn't want to come to the states and wrestle. Well, he wants to he, stay in Europe. So his whole thing of not even wanting to do, go to WWE in the first place was he has his own uh, promotion over in Germany and or Austria and also. He is a really big family man, and he didn't want to be away from his family. And the beauty of NXT is he just – NXT UK is he goes for the tapings, does them, is gone for like, what, a week, and goes home. Yeah. Like, that's – it's the perfect setup for him. There's no reason. And they couldn't – they would have to give him all the money in the universe because Walter seems like a guy that really stands by his – what he believes and feels. Oh, Which is disappointing because that. he's so good. He's – He's so good, and they I mean, him. he, um, he, uh, and then this is kind of the last thing I'll say about Walter. He, they, they had like a little, um, vignette for him, like leading up to him versus Pete Dunne. Which, by the way, wrestling fans, next week NXT UK Dunne Walter two, fucking don't miss it because oh. it's gonna not disappoint. I'm sure. Oh, I can't wait. But I'm sal, I'm salivating his, already. <laughs> right Ooh. in his vignette, he was so calm. My loins are girded. Cool. Oh. Calm, cool, collected. <laughs> Like you expect a, a a dude that big to be like a hothead? No, he was just like he he gave Dunn all the respect, and yeah. like but he like you know what? They're the reason I'm the ring general is because I take over, and it's just like that he he's so good. Yeah, so but good. I, anyway, when he did that splash so, onto Pete oh. Dunn, I'm fairly certain the words, "Oh my God, he killed him!" came out of my mouth. <laughs> like, God, oh. he's dead. He killed him. He died. He's dead. So, so, speaking of uh, so, speaking of Walter taking over, uh, real quick, I just want to throw in Gargano versus Cole for takeover rematch. That's going to be awesome. And mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I'm I'm going to slide in with the outside interference here from the Fatal Four Way. Uh, how about I do a little bit of stump the chumps here because you guys already took away one of my questions when uh, Ransom mentioned his favorite <laughs> Money in the Bank memory. Yes. Uh, if, if you guys if you guys don't mind. Let's do so it. You go we'll right take ahead. a little break. Let's, yeah, okay. let's 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 set the table though. Um, so fans of the P3 podcast, and we know that you're out there because we see you watching our videos. Probably we're not. going to try. Uh, thank you. We're we're going to try beef. and uh, incorporate <laughs> something called. It's not definitely not me. I don't I don't watch them anyway. Um, we're going to try and incorporate uh something, uh fan interaction uh called stump the chumps, where you will give us a question or questions, um, record it, email it, whatever. And uh, we talk it on the podcast and see if you guys can then stump us. Uh, Spoiler alert, we're the chumps. With yeah. that being You're said, the um, one, of, one of our fantastic sponsors, uh, Mr. Tiger Bomb Tom over here, has uh, graciously uh, volunteered to be uh, the first victim. So uh, if you got what it takes, stump the chumps. All right. <laughs> All right. Well. I th I think I think I got what it takes. So I got I got questions for each of you guys now. All right. Uh, the so the first one's actually going to be for Mr. Ransom since you oh. had mentioned yeah, since you had mentioned uh, your favorite memory being uh, you know Edge winning the first ever Money in the Bank pay per view match. Uh, well that yeah 
Well, technically, that was uh, Money in the Bank didn't originate as its own pay per view. It had started on uh, the WrestleMania pay per view. So, my question for you, Mr. Alec Ransom, and you can give me either the year or the WrestleMania, but when did Money in the Bank debut? Which WrestleMania was it? Or you could give me the year. Either is acceptable. Yikes. Softball. That's a softball. Move. You hi- that was, oh, you, um, beef, you, you hush there, your beef. You, you hush your mouth because I got I got some fire for you, buddy. Yeah, damn him. right you do. Um, that was the same. Was that the same Wrestle, WrestleMania as the uh, uh, Triple H Batista, where where Batista beat Triple H for the title? I don't know. You do. Don't lie to me. I could. I, I know, could look it up, but I'm not going to say anything. I, I I know. I know for You're a fact. You're saying things right now. Shut up. The, I can I give you the entire card if I want to. Go ahead. You're uh, such a dork. You're the biggest dork that ever dorked. <laughs> I am a huge wrestling dork. You got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Giant nerdzilla bitch. Um, I, I want to say that that was the one. What what the f- frig? Uh, I'm gonna poop. Um, hang on. No problem. Buster, where's oh, Buster? Oh, good lord. I had spaghetti for dinner. Oh, uh, that red sauce is coming back up. I said, oh. I want to say that that was WrestleMania 20... 21? 22. 21. Final you are correct, sir. 21. Right. Yeah. That was all the way back in 2005. I was I was sitting there biting my lips. And he's like, you're like 21. I'm like, Yes. So, good job. Good job, Ransom. Job. All right. So, so that was a little bit of a toss-up. Now, I, I probably should have given that one to uh, given that one to Poot. That was a little bit of a head-scratcher, but uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe Poot may, may or may not know this one. I don't know. I'm running uh, three hours talk- of sleep, so fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Well, good. 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 Then, uh, then, then I may have the advantage. All right. Uh, so we talked about when it debuted, but uh, who the hell came up with Money in the Bank idea anyways? Oh, I know K-Fabe this. Kayfabe wise or reality Shit. wise? Um, I think, I think it's the same both ways, actually. Oh, I'm, really? I'm I believe pretty so. sure that Money in the Bank. Oh dear. I'm pretty sure it was. It was either oh, Mordor dogs. <laughs> it was not the Mordor dogs. I can tell you that. Oh, they're back though. I. There, there's one name that jumped into the front of my head, and it's one of those that you know, like when you take a multiple choice test, you like go yeah. with your initial, your initial like gut reaction is usually right. Right. Um. I I just read this the other day. And I'm got I'm, I'm <sighs> and I I really hope it's it's during his time when he came back. I'm gonna say Jericho. You yes. are correct. Yes. Woo. All right. So that, that so one was that that's, the that's champ. Legit. Champ comes through. Through. Jericho, oh Jericho, no! Jericho, I. Uh, that, uh, I think so. Uh, yeah. I think. I think. Yeah. I think. I think. I think that was an actual Chris Jericho idea, and that's why they gave him the credit um, in kayfabe as well because it was his idea. I believe. Okay. okay. Uh, so now the the next question specifically for beef, and then I have one. Uh, for the for the whole lot of you, because I I don't think anybody's gonna get it, but uh, the one for beef specifically. Um, so we talked about you know money in the bank and everything like that, and it hits Surrey. Um, there's been a lot of cash ins and everything like that, but first things first, to get the cash in, to be able to do the cash in, you got to win. Who has the most money in the bank contract match wins? I'm talking Ooh, specifically me... about. Hold on, I'm talking specifically about winning the briefcase from the ladder match. So you're not talking about the year that they did it for the belts, okay? Correct. Um, you damn nerd, you! I I I knew that was gonna. Come up. <laughs> he is. If, he's the if, worst. And you know what? And case, I, I. If, if and, that and I'll were tell the you, case, and I'll... Randy Orton would be there because I know that he won a briefcase and he won those belts. Um, or no, fuck! That was Cena that won the the, the belt. Anyway, um, but I will tell you. So but I, I will tell you. I'll send. I'll send you guys pictures of my notes afterwards. I have. I have that. I have all the winners written down, and I have the uh, the whole heavyweight title thing in there too. Yeah, it's there. But 
who has the most briefcase wins. Okay, so Edge had the briefcase twice, but he only won once. Oh, he's gonna he flex. beat Mister he 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 beat <laughs> Mister Kennedy uh, for 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 the title for for, for the second time. CM Punk CM Punk was the first one to get two victories back to back WrestleMania twenty three and twenty four or no uh, twenty four and twenty five, um, I believe. Um, so. I, and I know there's someone else with two, and that's where I'm trying to get to now. Um, Sheamus has one. Does Orton have two? No, Orton has only gotten the briefcase once. Rollins has that at once. You're just the worst kind of nerd. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, 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 I'm running through the events here. I hate you. Um... So oh, you pissed off the dogs. Oh. So <laughs> if we are, because I know they made a point of saying it recently, because I know that Punk was the. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say CM Punk is the only one that had the brief that's won the briefcase twice. I think someone else has won the match twice. Yes, Cena's won the match twice. He's won the Raw briefcase and those and 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 the uh, the match for the titles. But um, briefcase wise, it's CM Punk with two. You are correct, sir. And nice. I will and I will go through that you oh, with Lord. your giant nerd flex. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so Edge. So Edge was the first winner, like we had taught, like you guys had oh, mentioned. Oh, oh, in 2000. Oh, can I? Can I? Can I run him down? Uh, I think I think no. I got it. No, oh, come no, on. No, you know, no, no, stop flexing. <laughs> so so Edge won it. Edge won it in two thousand five. Um and then in two thousand seven when Mr. Kennedy had won it, uh, you know, he had won the match, but then Edge, I don't know how he weaseled his way into winning it off of him and he Kennedy got it was off hurt, of Kennedy. right? Um, no, I think Kennedy, I don't Kennedy got a false got a false diagnosis. They thought that he was gonna be out for like like seven months or so, yep. which completely wrecked money in the bank. And then he actually went, and then they they, they pulled the trigger and put, took the briefcase off of him. And then he went to an actual doctor, uh, not a quack, in Alabama. And um, oh, they were like, oh. "No, you're fine. You'll be back in like three weeks." And by that point, oh, wow. the, the die was already cast. Go wow. on. Yeah, that would suck. So, so there's uh, it's there with my es- uh, with my asterisk next to it. Edge having it quote unquote twice, but yes, Punk was the only one to win the briefcase twice, 2008 and 2009, and Cena. Had won, like you said, had won a briefcase, and in uh, 2014, uh, the year that Rollins won it, Cena won the uh, vacant WWE World Heavyweight Title match, uh, ladder match for it. Uh, so yes, you are correct, Punk, with uh, back-to-back victories, having won it twice. Now, the question for all of you, and I'll say, maybe make the uh, make the order go, uh, ransom poot beef, just like we did here. All right. Uh, we talked about when Money in the Bank debuted and who was the first to win and who's won the most Money in the Bank matches. But let's not forget about the rest of the card there. Uh, you got to have more than one person Ooh. in a Money in the Bank briefcase match Yikes. to uh, have a match. So my question to you, fellas, is who has competed in the most Money in the Bank ladder matches? Ooh. That's a okay. for this. For this for for this question, we are including the title match, right? Um, mm, I, guess, <laughs> I guess either way, it doesn't really matter. Okay, okay. But it, I, I will say this: it's not going to matter. But okay, sure, why not? Because right. this this is one I had to sit here and crunch some fucking numbers. <laughs> I have an idea. I have I'm, an idea. I'm not well. sure, but go, go ahead, go ransom. Ahead, ransom. Kane. Okay. Poop. Um, I'm, I'm going to wait till you all make guesses to uh, whether or not I'll let you know if you're right or not. I'm going to go with Randy Orton. Okay. Beef? I believe it's Shelton Benjamin. All right. Well, uh, for once, Beef is wrong. And wow. so is Poot. Uh, ah. Poot's, Poot's, Poot's actually off the radar a little bit. Um, Poot, let me see. No. Orton doesn't even register in the in like the top one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, wow. So surprisingly, uh, 
Mr. Alec Ransom is correct. Kane. Wow. But, wow. Yeah. Believe it or Give not. Give me that damn title belt, Poot. Oh, I yeah. thought it was a title <laughs> belt. <laughs> but, but, uh, I'll give you some statistics here. Uh, Kane is actually tied with two other people, believe it or not. Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston, both, all wow. three of them had eight, wow. eight matches apiece. How and did then, I not uh, guess follow- Kofi? I know, right? And then, and then go, th- go figure, the inventor of it himself, Mr. Uh, Chris Jericho, has six, six matches he participated in. Also tying him at six was Christian. And then Shelton Benjamin was at five. So... Wow. Yeah. Those were good questions. Yeah. So, that was, that was great. Uh, that was, that was a, that was, that was, that was a wonderful debut of Stump the Chump Storm. You, you know, knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Thank great you. Job. So right. before we get into the money in the bank predictions, and everything, um, while we're on the roll here, I would like to go into the, uh, the hot tag trivia. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, we are doing it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I feel like we want to. I feel like I want to jump right into that. Having been on the 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 trivia bandwagon here, I I want mine for beef. Damn you! Oh, do you want? Oh no. Okay. Well, then it'll be for you, ransom. Oh, all right. That's fine. All right. Uh, So it'll go. So I'm I'm for beef. Wait, wait. So poot to me, me to beef, beef to Tom, Tom to poot. All right. Oh. Oh, I didn't. Okay, I'm oh. getting in on this too. Oh, okay, awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh shit. All right. Well, uh, then I I guess I'll kick it off. Okay. So... Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So who, so who am I asking? Who's asking me? I'm sorry. I, I was looking I'm, at my question. You are just a you're a jack. Um, I'm asking you. You're asking Tom. Okay. Tom is asking Poot. Yeah. And I'm asking Ransom. So Ransom. Yep. You ready? I'm ready. Everyone knows uh, of the superstar Gold Dust. Correct. Uh, everyone knows. Yes. Everyone knows Gold Dust. Now his name supposedly is uh, is uh, a little tiny bit of a reference to a very old group of fellas, a little uh, a little trio, if you will, from way, 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 way back in the day at the beginnings of pro wrestling. They were called the Gold Dust Trio. Ransom, who are the three members of the Gold Dust Trio? I'll shit my pants if he gets this. I will too. I, I don't. I don't even know it, but but, this, but you know what? After after last week, it will not shock me. This is yeah, oh, really seriously. But like Gold this Dust is trio. This is one that I have kept in my back pocket for a while. I love this question. When the hell? I'll How give long you, ago was that? I'll give you. A, that, I'll give you a, like nineteen forties. I'll give you a hint. It was at the. It was like early nineteen hundreds. Oh wow! Yeah, we're going way back. It was. I'll, oh, I'll even give you an era. It was the nineteen twenties. Nineteen twenties. Oh dear Lord in heaven! <laughs> yeah, I, I like can't. I, said, I, intended I, beef. I, uh, I intended right this now, for I'm, beef. I intended this for beef. I'm drawing a little bit. Can you give me any hints? Uh, there. It it was consisted of. Uh, at the time, the world heavyweight champion, his manager, and a fellow wrestler and creative visionary. A world heavyweight champion and his manager. Oh, dear Lord. Who were even the world champions in the 20s? Is this WWWF? No, this is like... Before that? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I... I oh. I don't think there's any way that I would know what this is. You you want it? You want it? You want uh, the answer? Oh, that's way easy there, big fella. Um, oh, excuse me. <sighs> Can I take a crack at it if, if he doesn't get it? I, Hush, let him think. I, I want... No, I, I don't. I, I'm sorry. All right, I Beef, no you want to take a crack idea. at it? All right, so I'm, there's no way I'm going to get all three names. Okay. But based upon your... Let me hold up. Let, let me, me Google let me, this. Hold on. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not Googling. I'm, I'm thinking through the time frame. So in the 20s, <sighs> oh, they probably spaghetti. were in their 20s, which means that they were in their. Oh my God! So they, they, they would have been in their fucking. What wrestling 80s. promotion was it? Was it even? Probably, probably NWA. 
Um, oh boy. Um. Oh my god. The, the only one that I can think of whenever I think of the manager and maybe Classy Freddy Blassie. Nope. Not even close. Okay. No idea. Uh, okay. No idea. Tom, do you have any any guess? No freaking clue. Okay. I've I've honestly I've been tuning you guys out because I'm trying to come up with a with a trivia question for you. <laughs> Dude, this this honestly, I learned this back when I was in seventh grade because I read for Book It, I read a uh, wrestling history book that we had. Yeah. At the at down at down at uh, the school, this would be the world heavyweight champion was Ed Strangler Lewis. His manager okay. was Billy no, no Sandow, idea. and the third <laughs> member was Joseph Toutmont. Wow. So I have no idea. Ed, Ed Lewis, Billy Sandow, and Joseph uh, Toutmont. So there you wow. go. Nope. Going way no deep idea. on that one. All right. Ransom, Good your Lord. turn. Oh, my jeez. I'm reeling from that we one. We still got to get to predictions, so I'm trying to oh. try to roll it along. Fair enough. All right, Beef. Yes, so, sir. as far as Money in the Bank cash-ins go, how many superstars have cashed in their Money in the Bank titles or Money in the Bank briefcases to capture their first world or WWE or Universal, whatever? How many superstars have cashed in to win their first major title? Oh, that's a good question. That's a deep cut. All right. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to count them off. So give me a minute. Edge for sure. And so and just to make sure, we are counting like you said all three, world, WWE, universal, correct? Yes. Okay. So Edge for sure, RVD for sure. Um Orton, no. Um has Orton even won one? I think he did. Um I'm trying to I'm trying to go through the years here. Um so 21, 22, 23. Who the fuck won the... Uh, I don't remember that one. Um, and then Punk, yes. And then Punk the second time, obviously no. <sighs> and that's where it gets gray for me. Um, Ziggler for sure. Kane, no. Rollins for sure. Del Rio... Oh, was that Del Rio's first world title? Oh, fuck. I'm going to say that was not Del Rio's first world title. Uh, <laughs> Brian's was. So that's six. Um, trying to think of recent cash -ins. That that's, that's where it's getting me. Is, okay, are you including women in this as well? Or just men? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. So I got six for men. Bliss was not her first, so I'll, so that's 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 a no go. Um, Mella's was her first, so that's seven. Oh shit! Uh, I'm 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 there's there's a big gap there because for a lot of years. They were doing oh swagger, um, so that's another one. For a lot of years, they were doing two a piece because of the co-branded stuff, and that's where I'm hitting a lot of hiccups. Um, so that's I have eight. Um, got wrong. Just keep in mind we get, we let, we probably should try to move it along there. So uh, um, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm working on it. Business. I'm working on it. Um. I'm going to say I'm going to say 9. Exactly. Woo -ha! 9 wow. exactly. Good job. Whew. I... All right, Tom, you ready? Okay. Uh I I fucking hope so. All <laughs> right. So, we're spending a lot of time talking about winners uh and uh cash-ins that have won, but I'm going to talk to you about cash-ins that have failed. Not who has failed, but and not even so who has had the most cash-ins on them? Successful or unsuccessful, who was the champion that has been wow. cashed on the most? Oh, Jesus. Um, okay, let me think here. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. I, I have no clue, so I'm going to take a stab in the dark, and I'm just going to say Cena. You are right, sir. He's had it cash oh, on him three, three specific times. Edge, Sandow, and, um, oh, uh, fuck. Edge, Sandow, and uh, RVD, right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, RVD so, because it was at the yeah, uh, one-night stand. I was going to say, you tell me. You're asking. <laughs> yep, yep. Wow, so, that, was, that was a shot in the dark. All right. Tom, put out the champion. Put him down. All right. No. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. So, well, we're talking about a lot of championships. Let's not forget the illustrious hardcore championship. Uh -huh. I literally just had I literally just had to dig up my uh dig through my WWE encyclopedia to find you a, a good oh, question shit. here. So, nice. Here's my question. Here's my question to you. In the in the whole time of the hardcore championship, I'll gi I'll give you two different questions. One, if you, it, you can get either one, it's fine. One, who has the most title reigns as hardcore champion? And two, could you tell me who defeated who to unify the hardcore and intercontinental championships, thus bringing an end to the hardcore championship? Okay, the most reigns is Raven. Absolutely. And, yes, sir. Um, 27 wow. reigns. Yeah, the, the most is Raven. And <laughs> yes, Oh man! I think, to I think I know who lost the who, who who lost the hardcore title, but I don't but I don't know who beat him. I was gonna say who won, who won to unify it. Um, yeah, who beat man, who? Honestly, I have no idea. So I'm gonna say, just because he's been he's been easy to go to the well to, I'm gonna say. Well, you know what? I'll say, Kurt Angle defeated. Uh, duh, uh, hardcore Holly. Ooh, no. Can I, uh, can I, can I have a shot? Go for it. I feel like the last hardcore champion was Bradshaw because they had, the, they, they changed the hardcore title to like an actual, like good looking title. And he had those stupid fucking, um, horns on the title itself. So this was before, just before he was JBL, he was Bradshaw with that title. I, I okay. want to say, is, so so is that right? <clears throat> the, the person uh, that he that he lost the match? No, no. Uh, okay. Ransom, do you want to do you want anything or no? No idea. No, I have no okay. idea. Okay, so hardcore uh, Holly and Bradshaw were close there. So uh, in the last in the last ma a couple of uh, reigns, Bradshaw had defeated Tommy Dreamer. Crash Holly defeated Bradshaw. Tommy yes. Dreamer defeated Holly. Oh, and this, then the schmoz. Rob Van Dam defeated Tommy oh. Dreamer to unify the Hardcore and Intercontinental Championships. And that was, uh, uh, I don't know, well, it doesn't give me a year, but. That was, that was August. probably, that was during the time when I was not watching wrestling. So. Yeah, that that's was. Uh, weird two titles to unify, the Intercontinental right? and the Hardcore. That's weird. But. Yeah, that but was, in, right uh, that was uh, August 20, August 26th of 2002 in New York, New York. Oh, yeah, but ironically, the right man, the right man to do it was RVD. So yes, but, all right. So all right, that was really we've talked good, about so. history. We've done some great, some 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 great trivia here. Let's talk about this uh, year's Money in the Bank, which looks like it's on paper a pretty good card. Um, we know how that goes, though. So let's Rapid start with fire. predictions. So just so we're everybody's all on the same page, where we're at right now, your current reigning, defending, undisputed cruiserweight champion, Damn uh, right. Pete the Bard currently has a one victory lead over myself he stands at 11 and 9 i stand at 10 and 10 and ransom stands at 7 and 10 oh so, <laughs> so um, i'm gonna go ahead and throw this out there too and i didn't run this by the other two jamokes beforehand but oh, I, I made an executive decision so suck it uh -oh. this is a fatal four-way <laughs> podcast and it is right before the money in the bank pay-per-view our very own casual gaming dad is eligible to win oh. the chooser weight championship. Uh, you you, you belt, shut your pirate hooker mouth. Wow. That's, that's right. awesome. Our belt, so, so in our that, belt so can't so go so outside so brand. I will so in that scenario, so, so, in, so, in, so in that scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to look at win percentages. Um, since yeah. we since yeah. we have 20 wins or 20 matches on him already, 
We'll just look at yeah. overall percentages combined. So, oh man, all right. So, or we could just take it on a pay per view by pay per view basis. Yeah, that's what we should do. That could work. Okay, all that's right. Way then, easier. Then, all right. Well, then it, we will then it just wrap resets. what we're at right now. And okay, so uh, let's look at the women's first. Um, Becky Lynch is in two matches: one against Lacey Evans for the Raw tag, or I'm sorry, the Raw uh, title; <laughs> one for the uh, SmackDown <laughs> women's title. That definitely sucks. Uh, that definitely sounds like a Vince booking there. Lacey Evans what? in the Raw Tag Team Championship. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so, um, let's oh, do dear. Lynch Evans first. Uh, I'm on the fence about this one. I had uh, Evans initially selected, but I feel like it's way too early for them to take heat from Lynch. So, I'm going to go ahead and say Lynch retains for the Raw women's title. I am going to go with Lynch retains for Raw as well. Uh, Ransom? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Becky Lynch. I think the smart choice in this case, if she's going to lose one of the titles, it's not going to be to Lacey Evans. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Becky Lynch retains against, uh, yeah, against uh, what's her nuts, Lacey Evans. Yeah. Beef, are you writing all these down? Because I'm not keeping track of who chose. I got one. it. I'll, I'll, I'll start writing too. Yeah, I got it. Scribe. Um, right, you Smackdown. got it. Okay, good. Yeah, so, keep them honest. Smackdown. Smackdown women. Lynch. Charlotte. Um, Again, I'm, I'm going to stand by it. It's too soon to take either one of those belts from Becky. Uh, they're, they're calling her Becky two belts for a reason. She holds on. Uh, I'm going to defer over to Ransom right now. Ooh, gross. Uh, this one's tough. It's a tough one, yeah. <sighs> oh, spaghetti. Uh... He's nervous. <laughs> uh, Was that mom's spaghetti? I, I you're right. I, I re- Oh, vomit on your sweater. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right. They're really milking the whole Becky two belts. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that at least for one more pay per view, Becky Lynch holds onto this one too. See, I'm on the fence about this one because I could see them. I know they're hammering away the Becky two belts thing, and people are chanting it, and it's a money maker, but. Man, they have had Charlotte go over when we thought she was not going to go over. And mm. and the other thing is, too, it would keep Becky on brand, like to one brand. And with this new wild, wild card. card rule, she can go anywhere she wants. <laughs> and, uh, man, I know I'm going to regret this, but I'll, I'll agree with you idiots. And I'll say that they're going to keep Becky two belts until SummerSlam. Ooh. I, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of on board, but I have a different prediction. I think Becky's going to retain against Charlotte. However, oh. I feel, I feel there's going to be a cash in, and I think, I think Becky's losing one of her belts via a cash in that night. But Wait, there's as far as there's Raw and what? SmackDown tag team or uh, not tag team uh, women's champion matches, right? No, it's just right. it's just one it's women's just one. match. It's just no, one. No, 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 no. There's, there's two separate matches. Wait, why are you talking about championship or money in the bank? Money in the bank. Money in the bank. Oh yeah, no, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's one men's, one women's. Okay. Yep. So I'm, I'm predicting Lynch retains in her match against Charlotte, but I feel, uh, I feel by the end of the night she loses one of those belts via a cash in. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Do you dare to gamble as to who? So let's let's lead yeah. that in okay. to talk about the women's money in the bank. Uh, Tiger Bomb Tom, why don't you go ahead and take it? Who, who, uh, who's winning the women's you know money what? in the bank and then sub- subsequently Run. walking out with one of the titles? Run down the participants. You know. Oh, uh, the God. participants. I got it. I got it awesome. here. Uh, participants are Amber Moon, Mandy Rose, uh, Dana Brooke, the newly added Nikki Cross. Uh, taking the place of one Alexa Bliss. So take that for sad what face. it's worth. Okay. Um, wait, what did you say? I said sad face. Yeah, oh, okay. I, th- I thought you said flat face or something, talking about no. Alexa Bliss. I'm like, you <laughs> shut your mouth. That's a no, goddess. No. I'm going to I'm gonna jump on the Corey, Corey, uh, Corey <laughs> bandwagon there. Be like, yeah, Corey oh, Graves bandwagon. Goodness. It's oh. the goddess. You bow down. Um, okay, so Amber Moon... Uh, Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, Nikki Cross, <laughs> Bailey, Natalia. We know she's not winning anything ever again. Uh, so, oh. so just eliminate her. Sorry. Uh, Naomi and uh, Miss First Ever Money in the Bank herself, Carmella. So 
I'm going to go – I got it down between two. I feel like they could finally give Bailey a push again, especially since they were kind of working this little bit of a thing with her and Charlotte. Um, I can see Bailey having a short title reign and subsequently oh. dropping it to Charlotte. But I feel – I feel like they've been pushing Mandy Rose, so I'm going to go with Mandy Rose winning the Money in the Bank. I am going to say Bailey, 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 no question. Because one of two things, Bailey could win that briefcase, Charlotte could win the title, Bailey comes out, takes the title from Charlotte, that starts a feud, or Bailey wins that, and then um, Bailey wins that, and if Charlotte wins the belt off of Becky at SummerSlam, Bailey comes out cashes. Ransom? Good point. I'm going to go with Bailey as well. Uh, Tom, I absolutely love where your head's at, and I hope that, that happens. I'd be 100% in, uh, on board because that means that Mandy versus Sonya would be for the title. I'm all for that. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think the men's money in the bank is going to be um, a face palm. Um, not, not necessarily a face palm, but just one that a lot of people aren't going to like. So I think that the Women's Money in the Bank will be, and I think that's going to be Ember Moon. Ooh. Okay. All right. So speaking of the that's Men's the Money thing. in the Bank. Thank the you. The whole cotton. <laughs> I, 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 let's, let's see if it pays off. Uh, Tom, why don't you go ahead and run down the Men's Money in the Bank for me, please? Okay, Men's Money in the Bank. Uh, we got Andre Cien Alamos. Uh, we've got uh, Ricochet. We've got Drew McIntyre. We've got Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin. Uh, is that yeah? Mustafa Ali and Randy Orton. Ugh. <laughs> I can tell you this right now: Randy Orton wins the Money in the Bank. I- I'm not watching WWE anymore. I'm done. <laughs> Shut it off. Just the same as if Goldberg had won a title. Yep. Beef was out, you, so. pretty, pretty, much, yep. pretty much. All right. So, Ransom, what's your prediction? <sighs> this one's really tough because I, I feel like it could go to Baron Corbin. I, I feel like it could go to uh, uh, what's that? What's the Scots name? McIntyre. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it could go to either one of those two, but I don't know. I don't know if they would get is. Uh, well, they're humping Duncan. Uh, is the demon uh, still the Intercontinental title? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Finn Balor still has the Intercontinental title. I He's don't. Not I don't know if. Yeah. I don't think they would put the briefcase on him with the Intercontinental title. And the only reason Ricochet is in that match is to do a big high spot. Yeah. It's the only reason. Yeah. He's the Kofi Kingston of this match. I want to say Baron Corbin. All right. Bootsky? Uh I'm going to go with McIntyre. I I it was on I was the same way as Ransom. I was on the fence between Corbin and and McIntyre, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put my uh my chips on the Scottish psychopath. Mr. Tom. You know, I was I was thinking it Mr. Tom? I, I had it. I had a, I had an angle in my head where it since they've been feuding they they just had a match recently. Uh, with Balor and Andrade, that uh, let me let me just say, Zelina Vega doing a freaking hurricanrano on Balor was fucking amazing. Um, yep. <laughs> um, I thought it was going to come down to those two, and maybe Bray returns and cost Balor and Andrade would win. But I got to lean toward Baron or Drew, and I'm going to say Drew. I don't think he needs it necessarily, but the fact that he's such a heel, you know. It, that's it. Just gives it all the more precedence. He doesn't need the briefcase to win a title because he's big and bu- big enough and bad enough. But fuck it, let's give it to him anyway. So go with Drew. So I like where all of your heads are at. I, so Balor was my initial like trigger, but because because <clears throat> that was the rumor that they wanted to put the title the, the the briefcase on him and this this was going to be his big year. But I think you're right because he has the Intercontinental title. He doesn't need it. And it's not um, going to be. A- it's not going to be Andrade because he doesn't know enough English for McMahon. That's a whole well, other plus, story in itself. Plus, plus Andrade uh, and on, on the, Andrade won the 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 four way ladder match on SmackDown. So you know, if if you walk out getting your hand raised prior to a paper, you're probably not going to win. Um, yep. So <sighs> I don't. I hope it's not Corbin. He's already won once and failed. Let's just leave that at is. I don't think McIntyre needs it. 
don't sleep on Sami Zayn. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't sleep on Sami Zayn. They pulled Strowman for a reason, but I my mind tells me it's gonna be McIntyre. So I'm I'm going with McIntyre as well. Oh damn right. it! So uh, the tag team match. I don't know if it's for the titles or not. I wish I did because it would make the choice a lot easier. But on the pre-show, we have relegated former WWE champion Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, the current SmackDown Tag Team Champions, versus the Usos, who aren't even on SmackDown anymore. It is for the belts, uh, isn't it? Is is it? Well, then that... Yeah, Smack, fucking... yep, SmackDown, SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus the Usos. That that just makes the fucking choice simple. For me, I'm going D. Bryan and Rowan because, again... The fucking Usos aren't on SmackDown. Why would they be the champions? Uh, wild card. And also, I'm wild gonna, card. I'm gonna go with wild uh, card. I'm gonna go with the Redwood and uh, Daniel Bryan as well because apparently they're gonna remake the tag belts uh, in uh, the image that they want. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's a simple simple choice. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the bad wagon and say Big Red and Daniel Bryan as well. Yep, that put me down. Yep, same. All right. All right. Uh, cruiserweight title match. Um, the um, premier athlete, Tony Nese, versus uh, Davari. Um, it's too soon to take the title off of Nice. I, I'm, I'm sticking with Nice. The only Agreed. reason. The only re- Okay, so Ransom, you're calling Nice? Yeah. I'm calling the, Nice as well. The only reason that I could see them putting that on Davari is because they're going to Saudi Arabia. Oh. oh That's the only Fuck. reason. I can uh, see well, it they happening. did it with that other dumbass. What's uh, his name? Fuck you. Fuck you. No, oh, oh, yeah. okay. I thought, I thought, I thought you were talking about Buddy Murphy in, in Australia. And I'm like, fuck you. Take it back. Buddy Murphy's awesome. Sorry, no, the other the, 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 the modern day Maharaja. Yeah, that's stupid. I, yeah, the modern day fucking mook is what it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's that. That's a very flimsy platform, though, because they don't hold the two uh, the the cruiserweight champion in super high regard. So yeah, it's too early to take it off of Tony Nice. Leave it on Nice. All right. So uh, moving on, Roman versus Elias, and why is it the feud match? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Roman versus Elias. Is this even a question? Do we do, um, do we have to? <laughs> uh, now, now hold on. Has Elias won a match? Yes. Yeah. Um, somehow he's, he's, I'm, he's, I'm not. I'm not trying to be a jackass. I honestly can't remember. He's um, he's gotten last laugh on him. He him and uh, him and McIntyre were beating the shit out of Raymond's, uh, Roman Reigns. The last I saw, I no, thought. no, 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 no. Reigns Reigns stood tall at the end. So oh, I'm did he? gonna. Uh, okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go off book. I'm gonna say Elias. Elias Ooh. needs a rub. Well, maybe he Man, doesn't win clean. Maybe, you know, I can't see Elias winning to or going over uh, Roman in, in, in a clean pin. <sighs> Every time I've, I've thought, you know what? Roman Reigns is going to get beat. Every single time. Clean or dirty, Second, Elias is going Roman over. Reigns, stupid Superman punch and a stupid spear. I'm calling stupid Roman Reigns. Yeah, I'm also calling stupid Roman Reigns, unfortunately. I... I bet against him at fucking WrestleMania with Drew McIntyre, and I, I've just learned not to bet against Roman Reigns. Unfortunately, he's he, he's obviously the hands down favorite. So I'm gonna go statistically speaking, Roman Reigns. But I want our Pittsburgh boy Elias to win. I, yeah, this, Roman Reigns is Vince's boy. If this was going any other way than Roman Reigns becoming the next Stone Cold and Roman Reigns winning the WWE title at SummerSlam from Kevin Owens. I would say that Elias wins, but this is not going to be an extended feud. This is a nice little placeholder for Roman to get through to the summer. Uh, so I'm taking Reigns. Yep. U.S. title match: Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio. Samoa Joe. So here's my hang-up. Anytime you have family involved, it's tough. Um, they didn't give Rey the win at Mania. I was gonna say. Well, yeah. he was also injured. He wasn't was he? injured. Yeah, he was injured, he wasn't was. he? And um, it's it's the it's the rubber match. The only thing it, I can do is. is see them pushing this feud through to SummerSlam, but that's a ways away. It is. So, and they need to do more with Joe. But then, what would happen with Joe if he lost? 
You know what I? You know what I think? (laughs) Ray wins this rubber match, gets the belt. Joe takes it back quickly. I'm gonna go with Ray. I'm gonna go with Ray. Okay. Okay. I I am picking Joe. What about you, Tom? Oh, um, as much as it pains me to say, I I probably got to go with Ray because I I can see that happening. Like I can't see them just completely burying Ray. I think I, I think they probably wanted to give him a win at Mania, but couldn't because of his injury, and that's why it was such a squash match, which I had no problem with. I fuck Ray. I don't care. I've never been a Ray fan, but I'm picking Ray this time, unfortunately. And then, um, okay. So, uh, all right, we're, we're, we are a house divided. Uh, Miz versus Shane McMahon, steel cage match. Because, Again, you know, this, it's a steel cage pay-per-view. The only way, the only way that, <laughs> that, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I, this one is the one. The only way that Shane wins this one is if he jumps off the stupid cage. And I think, again, Miz needs a win for this feud. They got to wrap it up. Miz wins the rubber match. Agreed. We're Miz across the board, then. Yeah, uh, I don't. I, I don't see. Especially after losing at Mania, I. I, I don't see any way he, he loses here. And then the uh, the ultimate match of the evening um, will feed. Oh, I'm sorry. I. You know what? I forgot uh, AJ and um, so Seth. So we'll do that now. Um, AJ Seth Rollins. I know, right? Uh, AJ and Seth Rollins for the Universal Title. What do you guys think? Oh, it's Seth. They can't take that off him yet. I'm gonna go with uh, with Poot there as well. I, I don't think it's 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 too soon, too soon to take it off Seth after that big ass win. Now, see, I would think the same thing, but then look what happened with uh, the women's tag team titles with Bailey and and uh, Sasha. I didn't think yeah, they were gonna take them off of them. That's, that's because Sasha's a big fat baby, mailbox head, <laughs> fig nuts. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Like, could you can you see? Uh, we you were talking about this before. Who's who's actually held the Universal and WWE championships? It's only been uh, Rollins, Reigns, and I think that's it, right? Yep. As to right now, yes, sir. Lesnar. I don't... Oh yeah, Lesnar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lesnar. Yeah, f- yeah fuck but him. He doesn't count. My point stands: yeah, if they're gonna take that belt off of Rollins, it's gonna be at SummerSlam. Yeah, I I think uh, I think I think Rollins retains this one. I think this uh, is I, like I think I think this is like the case of uh uh you know Johnny Wrestling versus Adam Cole baby you're not gonna everybody walks away the fans walk away a winner at this match but uh, it's, yeah it, but I yeah, I remember I, thinking that last year WrestleMania with AJ versus Shinsuke Nakamura and turns out nobody won nobody wins how about that nobody uh-huh. wins baby it's a dusty so, finish I want AJ to win um. Because I want this the feud to continue to SummerSlam, and I think that it will. But I just, unless Brock Lesnar gets involved, which is you never fucking know with him. Well, even unless, if he does, that's a DQ victory. So. Well, yeah, but Ooh. you know, ref bump, ref bump, you know, or or the club. I mean, it's. You know what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm 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 taking that back. I'm taking that back. I say AJ wins by DQ because Lesnar interferes. Let's go with that. AJ winning. Okay. By uh, by some sort of di- by some sort of disqualification because then it keeps the title on Rollins and it keeps their feud alive. So I'm saying AJ keeps, by DQ victory. It keeps them both looking strong. It it's does. True. That's what um, I'm going with. Does they finish, baby? So I think it's uh, Seth is going to win. Only because I don't think that they'll do two main title switches in the same well, show. Well then, and why don't we why don't we qualify this then? Wh- wh- can on. I change my answer to say Rollins retains? Ooh, that see that would be too easy though. Yeah, that's no for we're we're doing pickums. Who win the match? Does Rollins or does Rollins or AJ win the match, Putin? <laughs> I got I just you thinking don't, that. Like, yeah, it does. what's the, what's the universal match? <sighs> oh Lord, that's that that is the universal match. Uh, the the oh what's the the WWE? Owens versus Kofi? That's Owens Kofi. <clears throat> because uh, because uh, Lesnar Lesnar versus uh, 
Rollins is set for Saudi Arabia. I I don't see them changing that card anytime soon. But Raw- oh wait, yeah, that is how it works with DQ. Man, I don't know. I that would make sense because it would set up a few. But but but, but Lesnar's not Lesnar's not in, like doing WWE anymore. Oh, he's not he doing is. UFC either. Well, he's he's doing Saudi Arabia. That's true. Yeah, he's, uh, UFC. The card. He, oh, yeah, Lesnar and UFC couldn't is, come to a deal because it was a money thing. So I, Saudi, I'll guarantee he shows up. Saudi Arabia is in June. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no! First weekend in June, or the second weekend in June, because they canceled Takeover because of it. All right, fucker. Uh, you know what I'm gonna. Uh, hmm. I, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna kind of do what Tom said, but I'm gonna stand by my statement. Rollins wins right afterwards. Brock Lesnar comes out and beats the shit out of him. I think I think Rollins wins, and we get the full AJ heel turn. I think I think oh, that the, the club great. will reunite, and I think I think that we will see AJ versus Seth at SummerSlam, which AJ may beat Seth at that point. Yeah, but it ain't gonna be this time. It, no. it, it ain't gonna be so. Rollins wins. <laughs> I'll go with Rollins right. wins. So then, the finally, the ultimate match of the evening, the uh, WWE title match, uh, Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens, which is probably the hottest feud they got going on right now. What do you guys think? <sighs> Silence across the board. <laughs> Kofi, Kofi's had the belt for, what, a month? Barely. Man, Kofi as champion is so hot. I don't know. I don't. It'd be great to see KO with that belt. And he always works his magic. He always makes whatever belt he's holding the most important belt on the show. But, oh, I'm going to defer. I got to think about this. Ransom? No. Tom? (laughs) Hard pass. (laughs) All right, go well, ahead, I'll go. Uh, yeah, Owens, hundred percent Owens. Um, I love Kofi, and it was a great moment. But I am kind of on board with Kevin Owens with what he's been shilling that Kofi's not. When when I think of a WWE champion, Kofi Kingston honestly does not jump to mind. Uh, Kevin Owens does. Plus, whether they're going to take the belt off of Owens to Goldberg or to Roman Reigns. Um, there is no way that either Goldberg or Reigns catches any kind of heat for beating Kofi. So uh, it's got to be the guy who's ready and willing to take the heat, and that's Kevin Owens. So Owens wins the match and the title. Oh, See, my only, my, my only problem is, is like, you also, that's also another match that's slated for Saudi Arabia. So could we have, could we have Owens win over there? Like, will it, I don't know, like. So I don't treat those shows because I've I've watched Crown Jewel, I've watched Best in the World, and I watched the Super Show. They're all glorified house shows. Oh, and the Greatest Royal Rumble. They're all okay. glorified house shows. None of them. The, yes, there was a title change at one of them, um, where Reigns beat Lesnar, or right. no, yeah, but I mean, it, but that was that was like the the the, the dusty finish or whatever. The, but otherwise, they've been they've been glorified house shows put out because of the WWE machine. So when, when I think about those events, I, I, I don't truly think about them as a pay-per-view, if that helps anybody. Mm, Owens. Oh. Yeah, I like your logic on that, Beef, as far as uh, – I, I mean, I – Kofi. Yeah, I, I agree that Owens has got to be uh, – Owens has got to take it off of him at some point. I was just thinking, like, is it going to be now or is it going to be Saudi Arabia? And – with with your uh, with your analogy of Saudi Arabia as a glorified house show, <clears throat> I, I'm inclined to go with Owens. I hope I don't regret it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Owens as well. I like your logic on that beef. Pooters, Pootski. The match slated uh, for Saudi. The match for Saudi Arabia is slated as Owens versus Kofi, right? Correct. I might actually be I might actually be able to find that. Uh, I have a picture of the card. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. But keep talking. <laughs> Kofi keeps the belt. Owen wins it. Owens wins it over in Saudi Arabia. 
They would want to pop. They would want something special. And they want people to watch this knowing full well the, the like, sensitivity of the fact that they are still running Saudi Arabian shows. I'm going to say, oh, wait, that would really leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, though. Here's here's what I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh. Uh, here's here's the card for Saudi Arabia as far as what I what I saw pitchers sent to me. Uh, Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman, just a whatever match I guess. Uh, Balor versus Andrade Intercontinental Championship. <laughs> uh, now now bless you. bless you. Keep in mind as always the card is subject to change, but oh, the yeah. fact that they're putting this shit out ahead of time, I, I think this I don't know I think this was leaked stuff. Uh, Universal Championship. Rollins versus Lesnar, um, Reigns versus McMahon, whatever oh. there. Yeah. Um, Shane McMahon, mind you, not Vince. Oh, just, okay. Just to clarify, obviously. I mean, it would be if, never mind. I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> we know where that was about to go. Uh, <laughs> the only time you cheer for Roman Reigns to win, so he super bad punches Vince McMahon's dead face in. Um, anyways, <laughs> healing up. Um, Okay, and then um, uh, WWE Championship, Kofi versus KO, and there's a 50 man battle royale. Fuck, who cares? Of course, um, and then and then Dusty Bones versus <laughs> that's Goldberg for oh. those of you that yeah, Spirit Jackhammer versus Dusty Dead Demons. So you that's the Saudi add, Arabia show. Just to add some spice, because either way, I mean both. To me, both make sense. I. Wow. Oh, this is tough, especially with Rollins versus Lesnar, too, and probably having Lesnar take that belt back. Um, who. I'm you know what? I'm I'm going to just so we don't have a lot of stuff that is samesies. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna stand with Kofi wins and retains. Oh, okay. all right. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll differ. That's fine. Let it not be said that you are not a defending champion, sir. That's. A, that's He's a all great... in. Uh, dude, he is oh, all hey, listen. In. I am. I am a fighting champion. There I, I have a lot of. I had a lot. I had a lot of puffery and a lot of. Uh, you know, poot the bard babies and everything like that. But I will. I will put my title on the line. Yikes. <laughs> All right. All well, right. hey guys, we've been cooking yeah. for almost two hours. Damn. Yeah. Why don't you, so, uh, Beefaroni, Beef Wellington, Beef Stroganoff? Uh, that's me. What? Why don't you do the uh, Why don't you do the sponsor <laughs> thing here one yeah. last time? Of course, we as always would love to thank our wonderful sponsors over at WrestleDeals dot com, which is of course your home for violent <clears throat> deals and bloody good prices, as well as. Uh, the wonderful sponsor of Casual Gaming Dad's Corner over on Facebook. Uh, you've enjoyed his voice this evening. Tiger Bomb uh, Or day or whatever you're, <laughs> when, whenever you're listening to it. You're, you, you've enjoyed his, uh, the, uh, the, the back and forth with us here. Go give him a like on Facebook. Check out his videos. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, much, Tom, for having us. Or, or for coming uh, here with us, with having us. And we're... <laughs> yeah, all, for the all, all, all the above there. All the yeah, herb. all of it. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you, you guys. The hers uh, and the Durs. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, yeah. Thank you guys uh, again. Um, I, I really, I've, I've enjoyed the podcast even since, uh, you know, since the uh, the test video launch, and I've watched it. And I, the The chemistry, even before Ransom got on there, between uh, Putin Beef was was awesome, and uh, you know, and, and I'm very glad to be partnering with you guys and helping your guys' uh, page hopefully grow and. Uh, you know, just uh, entertaining the people. Uh, so thank you guys for having me on here. And uh, hopefully everybody uh, enjoys the podcast. And uh, like I said, I will hopefully be back on more of these in the future because everybody loves a good fatal four way. So oh, it's a, it's a good four way right. dance. All right. Also links will be in the description of the YouTube video for links to our anchor.fm page. Also for Spotify and uh, Google um, podcast. Uh, again, our YouTube channel is Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. You check it out. Give us a subscribe. Uh, go over to our Facebook page and uh, give us a like. Follow us on Twitter at Pit Pile Driver. At Pit. While you're doing that, there. 
Beef, and, why don't you go ahead and plug your Twitter? Oh, uh, you know, I always forget mine. Uh, it's it's at I, Beef I, I, Legend Forty Two. I've been oh, I've been reciting it. I've been <laughs> reciting you, it for sir. the last three days. Look yeah, that. I've been it's, reciting. It's got me. I know. I'm on. I'm on I, the ball. I got. I got I, you. Um, I'm, I'm picking. <laughs> Uh, Tom, what's yeah. your uh, what's your Twitter? I have no Twitter. Oh, <laughs> Twitter list. Ransom, what's your Twitter? Go ahead there, Pootski. Uh, mine is <laughs> at Poot the Bard. It's all about branding. Poot, you know, why at not? Poot hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Yep, at Poot the Bard. Mine is, uh, mine's at Triforce Ransom. It's currently following three people, <laughs> Beef, Poot, and the Pittsburgh Power Driver podcast. Currently zero and he's, followers. And I think I and have probably not- about five tweets. <laughs> and he's not following me because I don't have a Twitter, but Casual Gaming Dad does have an Instagram. So uh, you can catch me on Instagram, Casual Gaming Dad 84. That's also uh, as well as my uh, as my Twitch handle. My Twitch channel is Casual Gaming Dad 84 because God damn it, somebody already had a Casual Gaming Dad <laughs> channel. The <laughs> same, this probably the same guy that's also on YouTube. So if you follow me on YouTube, uh, look for the black and white logo. It's the same as my <clears throat> Facebook page, Casual Gaming Dad. And uh, there you go. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, this has been a great episode. I'm going to go ahead and steal the thunder there from you. you go ahead. I did it. This has been a uh, hopefully a, thunder. It's been, oh, <laughs> damn it. <sighs> it's been a great episode for me, at least. Not uh, content wise, you know, but uh, fun wise. I had a really good time. Hope you guys had a great time, too. I hope Tom comes back because I think uh, I think we got some magical chemistry going on here. So for uh, the casual gaming dad, Tom Bodnar, Beef the Legend. Hoot the Bard and Alec Ransom, thank you, everybody, for listening to the uh, Pittsburgh Power Driver podcast. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Uh, oh, God, fucking spaghetti. <laughs>